Hello. I'm going to talk through how I, I created Ryla and my workflow pipeline from 3ds Max to Capture Animation Toolkit to Motion Builder to Kinetic, then back to Motion Builder, back to Capture Animation, and then rendering into 3ds Max. Now, this project I'm working on, which is a recreation of Let It Go from Frozen, starring models from the Dota 2 game, it's probably very challenging in the sense that I wanted the animation to be motion captured files from my kinetic and not handmade because the animation is going to be very, I wanted to be very realistic and I can't, I'm not that good of an animator yet to do it through hand. So this is my base model of Ryla. She's holding the ward, she's got the weapon on the back. Now there's three kind of animation points in here. There's the body which is controlled by the character animation toolkit. So if I move an arm, you can kind of, and her pelvis and her rib cage, you can kind of see how that all animates. And you can set up key points using that. And through motion capture, which I'm going to do as well, there is a cloaking system, which is the, not that, the base, the cloaking system, which is this two pieces of fabric here, which will base um, on the M cloth. Now, M-Cloth is a, is a new modifier I'm trying out. It's for mass, mass effects on 3ds Max, so it does rigid things. Now, one of the good, better things about this uh, modifier compared to the cloth modifier here is this is the actually GPU-enabled cloth modifier, so it actually uh, uses the GPU card to render your animations in cloth, and it's a lot faster. Now, I'm having a problem with the deformance, uh, deform uh, making this reactor deforming mesh on, on the skin, so, but if I set up the rigid to be the actual bones, uh, I, I've kind of cheated my way out of that. I'll maybe talk about cloth if it, and further down the line if I if, when I learn more about it. But I'm happy with the way the setup is used. And finally, there's the facial rig setup, which is used using the animation reactor, which is an animations animation reactor. Yes. So what I've done is 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 linked, created a 2D setup here, and linked the nose to and the eyes to do different things depending on. The positioning and that connects with the morph targets that Valve has nice enough to use. When you when you download these models off the Valve site, they most of them, the humanoids really have a morphing modifier already attached to it, and this is exactly the same the morph application they use in the game itself. And I'm guessing that's triggered using voices, but I'm using this rig to connect with this morpher. A modifier using the reaction manager. And this is, this is a pain to set up, but once you've got it set up, you only have to do, use it once and you're good with animation. Now, the processing to set this now for kinetic, for connects, for motion capture, it's really good because it's cheap and you can really set it up for like under $200. It costs $8 for the connect and probably $100 for the actual software in, involved. But uh, I'm really impressed with the way 3ds Max talks to Motion Builder and how it's all set up. So. The pipeline, what we want is we want, a, well, what I want, what my workflow is, because I, since I use Character Animation Toolkit a lot, I've got a good little layer system here we can add animation in. So uh, this is a walking animation using Character Animation Toolkit. But what I want is once you import a motion capture, I want to insert it into a layer and then use that as a, as a layer. And then I can add local um, modifiers to it, and another layer, and that world space on it, motion animation to it. Like Literally, I'm tied a little bit. So my goal is to import motion capture devices into an available layer. And that's the goal. Now, when I first tried it, how to do that, I just sent everything to Motion Builder and set it as a new scene. It imports into Motion Builder, connect my kinetic there, and export it. The problem doing this is a lot of things in 3ds Max you doesn't import well into Motion Builder. When I import this model into Motion Builder, it destroys the reactor manager and the wire crowders you have, which means your, your facial rig won't work, which is pretty bad. So what I did is created a new motion-friendly 3ds Max file, which is just a clean version of the skin, the body with the skin, as well as the bones. That way, when I'm importing it into Motion Builder, it only will import the relevant data I'm interested in, which is the skin and the bones. So let's try that now. There's no lights in here. There's no um, really any, any rendering effects. If we sent this all into Motion Builder, how it is now, yes to everything, it will export into Motion Builder, which we'll do shortly. Which we'll do shortly. Uh, there it is. 
And as you can see, right over the bones all set up. Now, uh, it's worth taking some time into learning how this interface works because it's it's a new it's a new program and it's unlike anything you've ever perhaps seen before. But uh, there's this, there's a few tutorials in there which probably take a, an afternoon or half an afternoon to set up, and it'll give you a good layout where everything is. So what we're interested in is in, in, is in the devices. Now the the Motion Builder 2015 versions come with a Kinetic 1.0, and you can drag and drop that into there. But I don't like using this because I find this little not compatible enough. There's there's a few problems with it. It doesn't let you record unless you go doesn't let you record your motion capture unless you go through this long process of setting up a character and mapping a character onto another character and then mapping this onto another character, making sure you're setting it up, um, doing all this stuff. I don't find it very good, a, a very good solution. Maybe in later versions I'll fix it up. But I'm more I'm more likely likening into this. This is a, a plugin created by um some guy in Europe, I think, is for hundred bucks, and you can get it, this neat program, which you might have seen it on YouTube, and other people have um, stored it. It's the kinetic thing, but it comes with a, a smoothing algorithm in there, and a few other goodies, which lets you uh, export things off different programs. And it's, it's really actually a good a middleware software to use between your kinetic and motion builder, and that's what I've chosen to use with a few experimentation, and I suggest it to other people who are interested in going to this workflow. So that's what that thing looks like. And I'll show you how the process is involved. So we just drag and drop, and it will create the devices in here. Now, um, this needs to be run. If you're running it from a local drawer, if you can just set everything how it is. Now, um, to connect our character with into this, into the kinetic first, we need to turn it on. Now, if I stand in front of my camera, I'll just do that now, you'll be able to see that not show up yet. So why? I have to, oh, I have to set up a model first. So this is the steps. Bit too eager first. Set up a model binding as a reference. Just doodling on a month first. So if I stand up now, there we go. That's my actual balance. Now it's important for the characters to be in the T position like that, because that's how Motion Builder teaches um, the kinetic file and your body what lines up to what. My earlier version video had the, had the arms not lined up right properly. That's because I wasn't on a T, T scale. So that's the T scale. Now, in order to train your model to, to your chain the model into your kinetic file, you need to click this button here. But you only have to do it once you're in position. So I usually give myself 10 seconds. It's like a camera, 10 seconds of delay. Click on it, reach down. Again, position, there should be a nice countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. It work. I can't see that far. I'm just going to cheat and go across, see if it works. Yeah, I think it worked. Now, if we go to our characters, double click and bind it. Oh, well, maybe here. Yeah, to set the, um, the character we've imported and set it to the first one. Oh, she's upside down. Now, if you get into position, and go back to my T position, you can see uh, she's mapped up accordingly. Now, what you can do is move, if you're not happy with the way that is, you can select the bones structure in the scene and use the transform to move it up. Yeah, right. So to fix it up, we need to select the right one. I was using the mesh. Don't use the mesh, use the actual bone system inside the mesh. And you can move it up and down to offset the, the kinetic bone structure. So if you try it again, it should be much more aligned. See, yeah, that's much more aligned. Okay, now that's good. Now we can actually use a motion capture to do that now. Now there's a bit of a hot spot between where you should be. So if you stand too close, so miss out the bottom feet. If you stand too far, there's not enough detail. Well, working around here would be good. Now, this isn't the end solution. Once you record this and import it, this isn't the end solution. This just gives you a good uh, layout for the waiting, the animation, how long you should wait. Gives a good, good guideline. So, once we've tested it out, the mass fine. What we do is we make sure everything's ready. So we go back to our devices. Devices. 
turn on recording, click record, and we want to overwrite or create, then choose play. Now get in that position, and we turn our animations on. So do a little dance, I think she goes, uh, if I also she goes like that, then she outreach fast. And that could be our animation. So we stop it, we turn it off, and we should, if we scrub the animation, oh, how strange, it doesn't line up anymore. But you can see how this is kind of a good starting point. There's a few problems with the leggings, but we can fix that up in either Motion Move Builder or Max. Now, since I'm not really familiar with how not to experience with Motion Builder, I prefer to do all my cleanup in 3ds Max itself. So how to get this into 3ds Max is once you see very simple and once you know how, you just have to select the Bone Hub, which is usually that triangle thing you saw when you create character rate at the bottom, but that's what it is. I've named it Bones, and we just click Update. And this will import the data back into 3ds Max. So, Okay, so here's our animation we've imported into 3ds Max. Now we can't use all of it, and the bits we can use still needs a bit of a cleanup. We can do that using character animation and track view and all the key editing software we have. But what we're interested in is importing this this layer that we've just imported, and I've just created a, a world adjustment layer to offset the actual position. This is a, the world adjustment layer is expressly for motion capture files to reposition stuff in world space. But we're not interested in that so far. So we want this layer, and we want to copy and paste that into our into our max file, which has the cloth and the facial animation rig set up. So how we do that is we select our hub. And we do that by finding it first. Maybe we can use that. So we select our hub, save animation. Uh, we'll start from 0 to 300. And we'll browse it to clips. Yeah, we'll just make it there. OK. Please wait while we save. Don't crash. Don't crash. It's doing this mini wall. Oh god, please don't crash. It won't crash. It won't crash. It won't crash. <laughs> god. Thank you, Water. How hard is it to save 300 frames of animation? This is a computer, super computer for God's sake. Oh, maybe it has crashed. I'll just prepare. So this is our glorious base animation file, which we want to import our data to. Let's just hope that it still works. No, oh, oh, it seemed like it's worked. Windows gone. So what we do is we select this bone, the hub, go into the animation, create a new animation layer, and then we'll right click, load anim, and we'll find and no, 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 not that one. We we'll find the one we want. So yeah, it could be that one. Sure was that one, wasn't it? It was a backflip. Alright, let's just scrub it. Yeah, there we go. So that's the kind of pipeline. Oh, a bit of a nightmare, wasn't it? Now make another a world animation there and Move the things back to, to where we want. So we want this to more or less be in more of the origin. That and the foot bones, the footsteps. Everything's so slow, goddamn. Maybe the capture. So move that back over there. So that's sort of in position, kind of, <laughs> not really, but that's, that's the process. Okay, now. Just to really complete this into my own personal how I do things. Now I usually have a tween layer 
which I moved to the bottom, which is the T pose that's tween to 0% at move down. Okay, and move down again. Yeah, so what we have here is that's the T pose, the absolute value, and I have it so it animates out at zero. Now that's to set up the cloth modifier, so we really want it to set up to about there. So if I change the global weights and made this made a key at zero, then turn this make this a hundred. It should because I got another keyframe in here at zero, I think, which is zero. Let me just change that. Make that a hundred. It's not the way you're supposed to do things, but whatever. So we have a keyframe and it goes back to our motion capture like that. So that's kind of interesting. Now, so we can do work on animation from that layer. We can add adjustments. We can clean up the keyframe. That's a, that's a general pipeline, which is it's not bad. I mean, I don't know, I don't know how good you are if, if you're good at animation. Maybe you don't need motion capture, but I kind of need motion capture just to get the um, the outlines. But that that gives it like a good outline of where things are and a good baseline. So from there, we can actually make our do the facial. Blah blah blah. Put some keyframes in, and the cloth. We can actually turn it on and bake it, and it will bake to our motion capture file, which would be good. So that's the process. So, just to recap: you have two files. One of them is a file with the cloth and the facial rig and the lighting, everything in it. And then you have your motion builder friendly Max file, which you use to import and export things from from Motion Blur, which looks like that. Now, once you have something like this, you can just go here and send all to Motion Builder. This will open up Motion Builder. From here, you have the file. You drag and drop the kinetic device. You set it up by creating a multi binding. Um, you turn it on, turn live on. Don't turn recording on until you're ready to record. Uh, you set up the timer, 10 seconds. Set the T pose on, race. Go back there, set the kinetic, you can record yourself. You bind it to the first one you've just created, then hit record, press play, do whatever actions you want to do, stop it, review it. If you want, you can actually create the keyframes in story mode, you can edit it here, or you can just export everything you've just done into 3ds Max by just going by clicking on the the bone hub you've created here in the scene and update. This will update the motion builder and create the, the actual keyframes in a thing like this. Then you go to the pelvis or the hub and you right click, save animation to a file. You reopen your, your lightning file with everything in it and you just paste it. You can add mod other modifiers to clean up the animation in here, whatever you're comfortable with. And then bake the cloth and we should see the cloth reacting nicely with the actual animations and then thus so was all. But if we render it, it should look fine. So let's give it a quick render to see how it looks using the GPU. The cloth doesn't look that bad. There's, there's not a totally smooth operator yet, but that's that's the um that's how would you that's how would you uh, get those frames. Then you can import those frames through Adobe and after much painstaking work, you have your movie. So that's that's the um, process that I've discovered works really well. And if you ha find a better solution, please do it. Now I know I don't know how long this is going to last for because um, this is using the Kinetic version one. Now I know Microsoft's making Kinetic two, which is out like next month, and which, which uses HD, a lot of joint. It's going to be so much better. Uh, but the um, programs I've used don't uh, not there yet. So in a few months' time, even if you look this up next year. This whole process will be obsolete. Maybe a new one will take care, but it beats doing everything by keyframe. So that's that.